block and I charge a customer, I'll check it okay. six spots on each of the cylinder. The bottom, the top here, bottom, top here, bottom, top here. So, and I get them a sonic test sheet and so they can have the, the thickness of their cylinder walls. So, as you can see, that's 374,000 thick. That's a thick block. And it's already 40 over. So it's 40 over from standard. So this would be, if it didn't have that crack, a great block. Well, so far, I've checked one hole. So if you're doing it between here, you just divide it in half. Well, the, the most critical part is here and here. This is where your piston rides up and down. Yeah. You've got a, got a thrust side of the cylinder wall. This right here, yeah, I don't want it 60,000 thick, but I mean, if, if this is right, a quarter inch or 300, and this is 125, no problem. There's no stress on the side right here. But I mean, it's standard procedure. I ch for 75 bucks or 100 bucks what I charge, I check everything, you know, so they know how thick. But if it was me, this is up and back here, not from front to back, from you know side to side. This is where it's real critical. As your motor's rotating, your, your engine turns clockwise, right? So you have a thrust side. That means the piston is putting a little more stress on one side of the cylinder wall than the other side. Okay. <coughs> So as the motor's turning like this, the thrust side is on this side on this one, it's on the other side on this one. So as the motor's, you think about the piston and the cylinder wall. So I'm gonna check another one just to see how even we are. But then you also get what you call core shift. When they cast these things, if the mold shifts a little bit, you might be thick on this side, thin on this side. So that's why you check both. You just don't check one and go, we're good. You know, we don't no do that. Problems. Yeah, no problem. Watch, I'll check one on the other side. Wow, that's 420. That's a really, really thick four block. I'm surprised, even. Um, I know on some of the older, like, Volvo engines and stuff, mm -hmm. they're, aluminum, they're aluminum blocks with a steel. Yeah, steel liners. Hey, yeah. Uh, how and, 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 um, yeah, Hondas. I mean, Hondas are different. They have some aluminum blocks with steel sleeves, they have some aluminum blocks with aluminum silicone. Here, we're going to. We're gonna lay, or you want to knock a couple cam bearings yeah, I'm gonna, in? I'm gonna put one more cam bearing in. He's gonna put a cam bearing in and kind of show you how we knock cam bearings in it. Then he's gonna start miking the oil clearance. We have a crank here. We're gonna lay the crank and torque it down and give you an idea how we check oil clearance. Oil clearance is very critical when you're building the motor, and it depends what the application is. I mean, a race motor, I usually set up, and it depends on the main size. If you have a main that's like a Honda small, you can't have that much clearance. You got. One like if there's a Ford uh, Cleveland, if Cleveland's a bigger main, you can get a little weight with a little more oil clearance. This is a stock motor, we're gonna probably try to send, and there's a high and a low side, so if it's within specs and stock motor, you know, I go, okay, let's go with it, you know. We're probably gonna set it anywhere from about one and a half to three. Sounds like a lot, but that, that regulates your oil pressure right there, you know. If you have four or five thousands, you might have oil pressure at an idle at five pounds, you know, so and that's, it's not good, but I mean, well, not good to some people, but, some race motors, they run real low oil pressure just because you don't have the friction of the thickness of the oil. I was at a dyno and we had this pro stock motor about 1,100 horsepower. And he experimented with oil. Put some 2050, this and that. Then he put some zero weight, I think it was Lucas Racing on Made like 10 horsepower more just from thick to thin oil. But at idle, the thing went down below 5,000 oil pressure. That's just scary. To me, it's scary. He's ah, don't worry about it. It's fine. Cleaning and magging, it goes start, start machining, boring, honing. We square deck the block. We check the line or before it comes to this. What he went through, the cleaning it, magging it. David will bore and hone it. Cut these cylinders. So nice and shiny. You see the cross ash? You see the scratching in there? You can walk up real close. You can get there close. You can't see it. See how the scratches go on an angle? Yeah, so they drag against the rings and the rings will seat against it. If it was just smooth like a piece of glass, the rings will never rub. That's why you guys them. heard a crosshatch, right? Yeah. That's the crosshatch. That's why you have to have it. You can't pull it through that hole. Some cams, some older motors, they're all the same size. Some are different sizes. So you got to read on them. They actually got a number and a box. So it tells so it'll you, what tell you what position to go in, yes. Position one, two, so you take that number and it says the number two goes in number three slot. See how it tells you that. It's a phone. It's not even a camera. Feel free to get around it. But this, little, this little tool that stands, see how I'm turning it? It's got a piece of rubber on it. 
it doesn't mark the bearing up. That's not the way we're looking. Well, you're gonna, we're going to drive it with a hammer. So what I'm doing is lining my marks back up. See, I put this mark with that one? Because you can't see the hole. Yeah. 